ask Adam. Hi, my name is Adam Ragusia. I cook on the internet and make other kinds of videos about food. And this is my first uh, audience Q&A video. My beautiful wife, Lauren, is here just off camera. And she will be asking some questions that you have put to me. Um, if she did not select your question, uh, blame her. There were over 700, so. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> All right, so the first question mm -hmm. you may want to save for a video, but I thought it was a good one. Isn't this a video? Well, I mean, like, a f it turned a whole, this question into a whole video, oh. but. So you can edit this out if you know. <laughs> I'm not editing this. This is supposed to be the easy video. Don't add them. <laughs> Don't do a bunch of editing on this, okay? No B-roll unless it's really necessary. The whole point of this is to give yourself a break, okay? I'm looking at you, buddy. <laughs> okay. Right. What ingredients can I save on and what should I splurge on? I think it's more a question of like, what are you gonna buy, not what caliber of it are you going to buy, right? Like, there's, you know, you could buy very, very expensive beef tenderloin or you could buy really, really cheap like Costco beef tenderloin, but it's still going to be expensive either way. So I think a better question to ask yourself is like, what cut of cow am I going to eat, right? Like, do I need to make beef Wellington because Gordon Ramsay scared me into thinking I have to do that? Um, or do I want to make a pot roast with a, a chuck steak? Which, by the way, given that I just did that on um, a video, it's been so funny because I guess, so I got that, um, that Chuck roast at uh, Publix. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I wasn't really paying attention to the price. I, it, I guess, suppose in retrospect, for a Chuck roast, it was $7 a pound, was like a little bit steep. And you know, Publix mm -hmm. isn't always the cheapest. Um, love Publix. Uh, you know, but like, you know, you, you, you pay for the service that you enjoy there, right? Um, and... Anyway, but it's just been so interesting to see people's reactions in the comments on that one because it was like all of the Americans are just like, oh my God, $7 for beef chuck? And all of the Europeans are like, oh my God, $7 for beef chuck, right? I wouldn't get really, really nice ingredients. Like the one thing, I don't know, maybe vanilla extract I splurge mm -hmm. on sometimes um, because really the, the expensive stuff really is better there, but that's literally the only example that's coming to mind. I think a better conversation to have with yourself is like, what? Oh my God! <laughs> the medical students who live next to us are having a a party. a party. Yeah, they warned us. They were nice about it. Yes, good for them. I'm sure they good worked kids. very hard this semester. Real good kids. <laughs> Anywho, I think it's a better thing to ask yourself: like, what do I want to cook? Do I want to cook an intrinsically expensive ingredient or not? And generally, I think the better choice is like not. Right? If you're going to spend money, I think I would focus those funds more on buying products that are um, better for the planet and society, right? Um, that are farmed or produced in a way that is consistent with your value system. Like that's a, a place where you really can absolutely spend a lot of money. You mentioned that the lasagna with fresh pasta is the best thing you've ever made, but what's the best thing you've personally ever eaten? Whoa. I think, I think the best, most gratifying bites of food I've ever had have been when I was dieting, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, you're, you're eating real clean for like a few weeks and then you go like, I mean, I've, I had like a, like a, like a, like a, like a blizzard from Dairy Queen because that's, th that's my thing. Yeah. And like, that's, you're just like, that is the most delicious thing I've ever tasted in my life. And it's, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a bad thing about food is that like, I don't, I don't know if this is your relationship with food. You know, my relationship with food is not wholly healthy, right? Like I, um, I think that a lot of my, my behavior is sort of addictive behavior. Like I don't, I like to eat in the night by myself furtively. It's true. You know, I'll get um, up in the morning and I'll be like, we just bought this package of Oreos and a whole row of them is gone. I know. Um, and so I think a lot of it is it's like, you know, like addicts say, you're chasing the dragon, right? Like your first high is amazeballs and then you are doing, what? This got so dark. <laughs> oh God. Well. Okay. <laughs> it's real talk, real talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it, it, addicts say like you're chasing the dragon, right? Like your first high is amazeballs 
and then you each one is successfully is successively worse, which causes you to kind of increase the dosage, but every single that does nothing. It really does nothing. Um, and so I think so much of like trying to cook and make wonderful things is sort of like chasing the dragon. Like you're trying to kind of recreate that incredible um, experience that you had when eating something when you were really, really hungry, which like most of us in the global first world have not been really hungry, really hungry in quite some time, right? Uh, so yeah, best thing I ever eat uh, when I'm breaking a diet, um, which, uh, you know, I'm reaching that point now in my like, you know, four to five year cycle of weight loss and weight gain where like none of my stuff is fitting. And so I have two choices. I can buy all new clothes or I can go on a diet. And frankly, the easier thing is probably just to go on a diet, which I shall probably do in January when I'm not so stressed out of my mind. All right. What's a dish that you made that took a lot of effort for a mediocre dish at the end? Oh God. What do you think? I don't know, but I just have this memory of that time you made fish pie and it was <laughs> just looked like something that had already been eaten. I think that was one of the few things you've ever made that I refused to even try. <laughs> Why do I have two water glasses? I just realized that. The, the other one is mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one is mine. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that was, uh, oh man, I was, I was on a real British cooking show bender then. That's um, disgusting. Did, I don't even think you ate that. <laughs> I got a little bit. And then uh, you made that one thing. This was like when we very, very first started dating and you uh, made that thing with the pork. That was like good. The paprika and the egg um, noodles. Yeah. And the, what's the, that German spice that you hate? Um, caraway? Caraway seed. Yes. She hates caraway seed. And I like caraway seed. Um, and this was like one of our, yes, this is like second time maybe I ever cooked for you. <laughs> and it was and I so did, bad. It was good, <laughs> okay? I did I did these like nice pounded out like kind of pork cutlets and then, uh, you know, did them in a pan and then did a pan sauce that was like sour cream and stock and paprika and caraway seeds. Um, you know, nice, very, very German, very German. I don't know why I'm going to Long Island to say German. Um, but uh, it was real good. And uh, yeah, she, I think she liked... You know, it was disgusting. Poured it into the toilet. I also toilet. don't like egg noodles, so the whole meal is a fail. You don't like egg noodles? No. But you make that um, you make that tuna noodle casserole. Yeah, That's but so you, good. It's so covered in stuff that you can't taste the egg noodles. Okay. But this was just like egg noodles on display, and I did not like it. All right, well, I really like that tuna noodle casserole. That and the fish pie are the only two things you've ever made in our like 15 years of being together that I yeah. did not like. Yeah. Okay. So not quite an answer to the question, but an answer to a question. Sure. So here yeah, we go. That's that's. That's a thing. What's your go-to meal when you want something quick-ish and homemade? So, I mean, honestly, it's like a lot of times it actually is has been pizza lately. So, because what I'll do is, I mean, everybody, when I made my first pizza video, everybody was just like, oh my God, this guy, you know, makes dough and then he can't actually like bake it until four days later. And what's he, you know, they just like imagined me sitting here waiting <laughs> for, the, for the dough to be ready. But for me, like my way of making dough is actually tremendously convenient, which is just that like sometime, some, usually some evening when you're not hungry, just make some dough and throw it in the refrigerator and then forget about it. And then really at any time over the course of the next 10 days, you can make pizza. And so that's, you know, been like a really, really excellent, uh, uh, are you, are you trying to get your water without getting in the shot? Yes. <laughs> That's been like a really, really excellent weeknight meal around here, frankly, because like what you do is you come home and before you, you know, acknowledge anyone, say hi to the kids, you just go over and you turn on the oven and get the, the pizza stone or the pizza steel preheating. And then you go and you do all those things that you're supposed to do. And then you just come over, take the dough out of the fridge and throw it in. There you go. It's done. So it's that. I, you know, I like, I really do like to make a, a quick steak at home a lot. Um, something I try not to do so much anymore, uh, so often at least anymore, because it's not so good for me and it's certainly not good for the planet. Uh, trying to, I've tried to cut down on beef quite a bit. Yeah. Well, on that note, does pineapple belong on pizza? Uh, you do you, man. Like what? See, this is right there. Like the, the I mean, I'm going to, I feel bad because I'm going to beat up on that person. It was a very earnest question. But here's the thing. It's like that entire concept where food is not about what you like <laughs> and like what you can do with the things you have around you. Food is about like rectitude, right? Like there's, 
there's, there's a way, there's a proper way to do it. That dogmatic religious way of thinking about food that is just, I would love to, if I can do anything with my newfound uh, celebrity, uh, such as it is, is to just kind of try to eradicate that, com that idea from the earth. It's so, so toxic, right? Like I had this, uh, this guy on my, well, I don't want to like draw hate to him, but like a person commenting on one of my recent recipes, um, just saying, oh my God, that's like the wrong way to do it. And it's not even a thing where I was like making something with a traditional name that has a whole kind of like, you know, rich cultural history associated with it. It was a very, very generic kind of dish. It was just like a cooking technique, right? Um, and it was just this whole incredibly long laundry list of the ways that like I was making his Irish grandmother sad. And it's like, dude, like that pot roast that you wanted me to make sounds great. I, I would like to have it, really. Um, but I, oh, I gave away the whole thing. I just said pot roast. Um, <laughs> but like, I feel like my pot roast and your pot roast can fully coexist. Like there's no, they're not, they don't threaten each other. Their existences should not negate each other in any way. So like food should be about what is good? What do you like? What do you sincerely enjoy? What makes you happy? What makes the people around you happy? It should be about what can you do most effectively and efficiently with the ingredients that you have on hand. Um, it should be way more about, uh, frankly, sustainability than uh, I have been talking about on the channel or living. All of that from pineapple on pizza. All of it. All right, so it's possible I picked this question specifically um, to needle you. Mm, any, great. Any advice on keeping a kitchen organized <laughs> when you've got ten Next. tons of spices and Next. tons of other ingredients? Next question. We've got to include a shot here. No. A picture no of what the kitchen looks like. No B-roll. Okay, <laughs> the whole point of this is to do an easy video because I'm killing myself. All right, so it's, we'll put it on no Instagram or something. But... Um, because Adam is always moving things out of the way to get a nice shot, and mm. he's moving quickly a lot of the time. Um, literally, our kitchen table has just a pile of stuff underneath mm -hmm. it because he moves things off the table and puts them under. And then our counters are just... <laughs> Like, my mom came to visit, and I thought she was going to keel over dead just looking at it. She literally mm. was like, I cannot. I cannot. And she walked out. <laughs> well, you know, none of you mind when the checks come. No, we don't. That's why, yeah, the kitchen is your domain, not mine. Mm. Uh, I will get around to organizing the kitchen when I'm no longer working two jobs. Like, I really will. Um, you know, part of it is also is just like, because to do the videos, I keep having to kind of, I have to like buy a lot of stuff, like ingredients to more use as props than to cook with a lot of the time. And those things are just kind of piling up and I need to kind of figure out a way to organize all of that into sort of like, yeah, the, the, the prop garage, which is not a problem that you have. Uh, you're just trying to like organize your spices and like, dude, I have no tips for you. I'm the last person you should ask. I'm sorry. We have a lazy Susan that came with this house in the spice cabinet and mm -hmm. There's so much stuff piled on it that the top it's <laughs> level sunk down. <laughs> yeah. It's buckling. Yep. So mm. the answer is we don't do that. Mm. Um, okay. You can travel to one country for an all you can eat tour. Where do you go? Oh my God. Certainly Mexico would be up there. Um, Spain would really like uh, to yeah. eat my way through Spain. Spain would be amazing. Uh, but probably Mexico would be my first choice. Is there a dish you've always wanted to make, but it has intimidated you? I don't know. I don't let food boss me around. I don't let food intimidate me. Like, if it seems like it's going to be hard, like, don't do it. It defeats the entire point. Well, no, I don't mean to say that. I don't, no. If you want to approach food like a project, right? Like a, uh, you know, a, uh, what's a... What's like a needlessly difficult thing a person would do for a hobby? <laughs> you know, like building, like people who are like building Gothic cathedrals, like using 11th century methods because, sure. right? Um, right, if you wanna do that, like the kind of person you are and that's how, like, how you relax, more power to you, that just, that ain't me. Like if I don't wanna do it, I don't do it. <laughs> I, I mean, I have, things, I have things that like I, I'm not good at making and would like to get better at. Um, top of the list would be burgers, right? Okay, so everyone is asking why you have no burger recipe. Because burgers are kind of hard. Yeah. Um, burgers are a thing that like... A lot of people think they're good at and they're not. No. You know? And you can get them so good from so many restaurants. Exactly. Or takeout yeah. places. It's like... 
Yeah, saying. and I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. And and so on the one hand, when I think about a burger recipe that I'd like to do, I really like the sort of I really like you know very thin patty kind of Shake Shack style stuff. And uh, J. Kenji Lopez Alt has a really, really great recipe for doing a Shake Shack style burger patty. And the only thing that's kind of not so great about it is that it requires some special equipment from like the hardware store. Like you need this kind of scraper thingy do and it's, it's a whole thing, right? Um, and it probably stinks up the house something fierce because you have to get the, 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 the griddle extraordinarily hot, right? Um, and so I, I've thought about trying to come up with like a, a more like a weeknight version of that recipe. But I also think, like, what's the point? Yeah, like, the weeknight go, version of that recipe is to go... Go to Shake Shack. To, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't get it. Or, like, whatever your favorite brew pub or burger joint is. The thing, honestly, you know, what I should spend some time on is just, is, like, backyard barbecue burger type things, oh, right? Oh, God, because they're always so, like, hockey puck. Well, that's the thing. I mean, maybe it's not possible to do, right? Because you can't... Because the, the, the meat will always bunch up on itself. No matter what you do, I don't care what you say in the comments right now about how like, oh no, you need to like shape it out with like the divot in the middle that does not work, okay? Um, if you're gonna try to cook it to like medium and above, that patty is going to shrink up into itself and kind of make this kind of like flying saucer orb-like shape. On a grill at least, because you don't have the kind of like friction that's necessary um, to kind of hold it in place, because it's, I don't know. I mean, there might be just through smashing, there might be a way to do it. Um, and that's something that I'd like to explore because that's something where like you get a, there's a reason to do that at home and not go out and get it, like, right? Like you fire up the charcoal grill, all the like the smells and you're outside and it's fun. And, um, you know, and whenever you get a grill really, really hot, like you, I think you want to cook a bunch of stuff because otherwise you're just, you know, to, to you know burn all those trees for like one steak is just kind of a shame. So that's, there's a reason to try to make a good charcoal barbecue grill burger. I think I just convinced myself that that should be the goal. That's your summer series. Yeah, but that's the summer thing, right? Yeah. Um, not that we really have winter here. <laughs> okay. Yes. All your pots and pans are destroyed except for one. Oh, what do you so say? easy. A Is Dutch, it, wait, a let me Dutch guess. Oven. Oh, I was gonna, damn it. I was going to guess that that's oh, what I was going to guess. It's not even close. Like, I got all these people... I, I shouldn't talk about my viewers that way. Like, I, I love you. You're so nice. The comment section is extraordinarily it's nice. It's extraordinarily for nice. The most part. But it's like, it's like, and I, it's terrible that I focus so much of my energy on uh, the people who aren't, right? <laughs> but it's also, it's kind of like when people say, when, when you leave comments that are like, oh, we love you, wonderful recipe. Like, the reason I don't really heart them very often or respond to them is that I, that seems like e egotistical, right? Like, I don't want to be one of these kind of, you know, Stalin-esque cult of personality bozos who, like, is just constantly um, rewarding his followers for praising him, right? I don't want to do that, right? Um, but the 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 alternative that which is the what i'm living most of the time is that i then end up giving most of my attention and effort to total a-holes right like which is not right like i should be giving it to you nice person even, even if you like are, disagree with me you don't like the recipe that's fine but like you you're you know you were raised properly and you know that like talking to someone on the internet is the same as talking to someone on the street because it's a real person either way right oh don't get me started. Anywho, um, what was the question? <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> you were talking about your Dutch oven. My Dutch oven, yeah. No, no, no. So this is this this was not like people being a holes. This was people being totally earnest and lovely. But lots and lots of people asking, could you do this pot roast in a slow cooker? And 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 I'm just I don't why I don't crock pots and slow cookers. I, the only reason I can think that they have to exist is if you have a gas stove and you wanna put things on to cook like all day long and you wanna leave your house and you don't feel comfortable leaving an open flame on in your house while you're gone. It's really the only reason I can think of to have uh, a slow cooker. Otherwise, get yourself a big, heavy Dutch oven. Uh, you can put it on, on, on an electric stove. It's, I don't see how that's any more or less safe uh, to have that big pot on, on an electric stove on you know low, very low heat. You can totally leave that there all day long. And uh, yeah, and you can do anything in it. Like you can, you know, you could use it, even though it has steep sides, you don't have to use it for things that have, that need tall or steep sides, right? Like you could totally just like fry your steak in there. It'd probably be good because it would control splatter more. 
you know, it's just, it, it can do everything. It's a Swiss army knife. So if somebody is looking for one kitchen item to splurge on, may, yeah, absolutely. maybe that and a chef's knife and a good yes. knife. A heavy, a heavy cast glazed or enameled cast iron Dutch oven. Um, probably six quarts, I think is a good size. Although, um, ours is between seven and eight, which I, I appreciate that extra size. Um, Oh my so. god! <laughs> uh, and yeah, a, a good knife, and not even like a, like a super expensive knife. Like I think like a mid price knife. Like I, okay, so I'm actually people ask about the knife. They ask about the knife all the time. Should right. I t- um, so I'll tell you my knife that you see on camera all the time. Which can you just grab it? It's in the dish drainer. And I could really just like cut to some B roll right now. But Adam, no B roll. Okay, that was threatening. Thank you. Things out of the middle, right? Yeah. W- what? Cut things out of the middle. Yeah, I know. I'll make, there'll be some jump cuts. Like here, jump cut. Would you stop? That was fun. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is my knife that you got this for me for uh, my did. birthday, right? Or was it Christmas? Birthday or Christmas? I don't remember. Um, where'd you get it? Um, our dearly departed local home oh, goods store, Robinson, Robinson home. home. Yeah. Although they did close the store so that now they're doing credible interior design. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, Will and Carrie, love you. Um, loved your store, but love that you're doing things now. Um, so this is the Calphalon Katana series chef knife. And I freaking love this. This is a phenomenal knife. Um, and it's a hundred bucks, right? And no, I, 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 I try not to kind of talk about specific brands or products because I now make my <laughs> living selling my endorsement of such things. Um, but like, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't keep my love a secret anymore. Okay. Calphalon Katana series, hundred dollars. I don't think that this is going to last a lifetime. Uh, mostly just because I don't treat it very well, which included dropping it in the street in front of the house the other day, and which is why you will see in future videos that it no longer has a pointy tip. I know, I went to go use it the other day and I came out and I said, Adam, what happened to the knife? And he goes, oh, you noticed? <laughs> well, yeah, Well, I mean, the but like, tip do, of it is broken off. Do you use that for anything? Like I don't like stab stuff, like you cut it, right? I, well, I, I guess if you were gonna like cut a watermelon or something or a cantaloupe. You, oh yeah, that's a good point. To get it started. Shit. But like, you know, what I want is a mid-priced item. Mid-priced items are my jam, right? So that if you do drop it in the street, you don't have to go cry in the car. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? But at the same time, though, it's like, it's good enough to be good, right? And like, and this is the only knife you need. Like, you don't, it's nice to have a little paring knife, but even that I would consider a bonus. Like, this is the only knife you need in the kitchen is a decent, decent chef's knife. And although I've, um, I have mixed feelings, increasingly mixed feelings about, um, Good Eats as a series, there was an, an early Good Eats episode where Alton Brown went and talked to some knife sharpening dude, like a dude with a truck, like the Santa Claus guy I talked to. And he asked that guy, you know, what should you look for in a chef knife? And I'm sure that Alton was expecting some kind of highly technical, oh, like the, the bevel and the facets and the degrees and 20s and 30s, like, you know, whatever, right? Uh, and what the dude said back to him was like, the knife, get a knife that feels good in your hand. Hmm. For the very, very logical and very true reason that whichever knife you have that feels good in your hand is the one you're going to actually pick up and use. So you can splurge on some incredibly expensive knife, but if it doesn't feel as nice in your hand as the one that is the, the cheap one that you replaced, you bought the expensive one to replace, like you're gonna keep going back to the old one every single time. And for a long time, like we had a knife that was like that. It was the orange one. <laughs> the Rachel remember? Ray the knife. The Rachel Ray knife. <laughs> that I think I also bought you that knife. Yeah. From Inner Chef. And no, <laughs> and no comment on Rachel Ray, like, I mean, that was a terrible knife because it had this, like, it had this, like, it was, I mean, I liked the shape of it. It was, it was again, sort of like, um, it was shorter than that. Asian style. Yeah. Like, I mean, I really like the basic kind of blade contour and all that and shape. Um, but what it had was this kind of like, uh, squishy rubber, grippy. rubber or grippy handle that w- did not stand up well to repeated well, also, use and washing. Also, we put that one in the dishwasher. Well, yeah. Of like, I'm sorry. I we never dishwash that one. That's a good point. We hand wash that I hadn't always, thought of that. Yeah. So. Anywho, the thing came off. But the thing is like that, that squishy like orange handle felt great. And I yeah. kept, like we got that really nice German one that I never use, oh, um, yeah. except for in that video, which actually made it worth it. The um, Wistoff knife? Yeah, the Wistoff knife, you know. But cause it's got this like really kind of angular, sharp grip 
and I just don't, I don't, it doesn't feel good in my hand. So like, honestly, like maybe this isn't the knife for you. I mean, I, I think highly of this knife, but it might be, um, it might be a relationship that's purely between us, right? Like it feels good in my hand and something else might feel good in your hand. And it, it really reminds me of kind of like, um, you know, my students, um, I teach journalism at a university um, for another three weeks. <laughs> um, and, you know, they'll ask me like, what's the best camera? What camera should I get? And especially in a journalistic context, I always, you know, the best camera is whichever one you happen to have on you when the thing happens, right? So although I teach my students how to use cameras like that one, right, I also make a great effort to teach them how to use cameras like this one, because this is the one that they probably are gonna have on them when the thing happens, right? You can have the best camera in the world, but if you don't have it on you when you need to take the picture, it doesn't matter. You can have the most beautiful, expensive Damascus steel blade ever, but if it's not the one that you actually pick up and use, it does you absolutely no good. All right. End of spiel. Okay. Um, okay. This one is so that I can get some compliments. Mm. <laughs> Are you always the one who cooks or does your wife sometimes cook too? And if so, what does she make that's really good? Oh. <laughs> Lauren did not cook very much when we first met. Fair? Fair. Okay. Um, I suppose I got you going on, on kind of on cooking pasta yes. and showing you a few basic kind of techniques, yes. but you, you really kind of... You invented party pasta. Which is your name for that. <laughs> which is what I, I don't know why. I don't, I, don't then, consen I never consented to that. <laughs> but I called it that for a long time. I do time. not co-sign that. And then it was a little more complicated and I just sort of like made it easier and easier and easier and now I have like a pasta dish that's my go-to nightly mm -hmm. pasta dish. Which we will shoot, I think, at some yeah, point. Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, so, you know, and, and now like every now and then, you know, she'll be tired and she'll want pasta and she'll be like, Hey, can you make me some pasta? And like, I'll do it. And it used to be that like when I did it, she'd be like, Oh my God, this is wonderful. But like now I do it. And she's just like, Ugh. cause it's not, <laughs> cause it's like, she's gotten, I mean, honestly, it's like, and this is such a, it's so it's, I view it as such a victory. And it's like, it's what I, it's the moment I want to bring y you to, right. If you're, if you're not there yet, which is to like for you to be able to like look at one of my recipes and know yourself enough to know, oh, I'm not gonna wanna do it that way. I'm gonna do, wanna do it this way, all right? Where you can take maybe an idea, the way that I take ideas from people all the time, right? But you know yourself enough to know what's gonna work for you. And like, and Lauren, you've totally gotten there with pasta, right? Yeah. Where it's like, you know what you want. Yes. Um, and it's such a thing because it's like, you know, I think I, I mean, I touched on, this is something I, I did, I talked about this in that Marco Pierre White video, but I had this point that I wished I made. So, hey, I'm going to make it now. Um, which is, it's kind of like when recipes say like salt and pepper to taste or like vinegar to taste. I mean, my, I do that and I feel bad about that because if you're a person who needs a recipe that some jackass like me might write, because like, I'm just doing a kitchen with a camera, right? Um, uh, if you're like in need of a recipe that I wrote, you're probably not the kind of person who knows how much salt you like, right? Like you don't know yet. Like I do, like I can like, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I know I've done this enough, old enough that I can like look at a piece of meat, look at my salt, pick it up and I can feel as it passes through my hands whether or not this is the amount of salt that I am going to want. Like I know myself purely through experimentation. So it's like technique is one thing, like you can learn technique, but like the more important thing to learn is what you like. And that's not an easy thing. You have to know how much salt and pepper you actually like, how much vinegar you like. And knowing that, um, you know, when you, when you taste it over at the stove, right? That like maybe you know yourself enough to know that if it tastes a little too strong to you at the stove, it's going to taste just right to you at the table or vice versa, which is a thing, right? And that's something you can only do through lived experience, as the kids say these days, even though there's literally no other kind of experience. Um, well, there's the reading experience. You weren't alive when you read? Yeah, but you can read about a thing that you have not actually You still lived the reading. Okay. Anyway. Jump cut. What do you think of the memes? The memes? The memes to do what? The memes. Yeah, I know. I just... Oh. Be an old man, Magusia. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fine. It's awesome. You know, to be... Uh, it's... I, I was... <laughs> speaking of reading, um, or not really reading, because it was an audiobook 
Um, because okay, I just... I will die on this hill. Audiobooks count as reading. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I, okay. You think blind people have never read a book? Well, geez, I feel really bad now. Well, that's what I always say. I was just trying to get points with you, <laughs> professional author. Yeah, I know. People buying my audiobooks right. makes me money, too. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I was listening to Paul Stanley's uh, autobio, the guy from Kiss. Uh, the guy from Kiss who's not Gene Simmons, right? And he was standing in line at a store in the 70s, in the late 70s. And this little kid looked up at like some Kiss merchandise that was being sold on the counter and said to his mom, look, mommy, a Kiss. And that was the moment when, when Paul was like, okay, it's one thing to be like a popular band. It's another thing to be a cultural phenomenon, right? This is good. This is very good. When like little kids know who you are, when people, even when people are making jokes about you and making fun of you, like that means that like you've become a thing. And, and so in that sense, like I'm very pleased because I want to try to make some kind of career out of this uh, for some duration of time. Uh, on the other hand, like sometimes I, I mean, sometimes I just think that they're kind of like not funny. Um, but like, you know, that's the thing about humor. Like it's, humor is really hard and you know, not nine, nine, oh, I was about to try to do a baseball thing. It's not, not going to happen. <laughs> nine swings out of 10. <laughs> Cause everybody knows, everybody knows you get 10 swings. Oh my God. Oh. Okay, so that thing just then right now that I just did, that's really, really bad, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. Prideful ignorance is always bad, okay? You should never be proud to not know something. And that whole like, oh, I'm too intellectual to know about baseball thing, like, don't do that. It really reminds me of what a lot of you do that kind of gets under my, that grease, really greases my grill. Is that a good thing? Or, well, no, greasing the grill is a good thing, right? Oh, my God. Um, get to the point is when uh, Ragusia. is when is when like you, you all of you in the metric world i.e. the world that's not here um, are just like oh these these imperial measurements I don't even know and it's one thing to like be confused and to wish that I did metric and I well, there'll be updates about that but um, what I dislike is the prideful ignorance the like I am too cool I am too European to know Google is a what you're talking website. about Google is a free <laughs> website and I have been using it to turn your um, uh, your recipes into things that I can read for a very very long time and you can do the same bro um, what was the question again what is a vinegar oh no no, no the meme the meme thing okay the me so memes is good the memes is good uh, memes are good. The memes are often very, very funny. And I think that's awesome. I'm thrilled. It's, it's to be a, a phenomenon, even in a very small corner of the internet, is fantastic. It's absolutely like living the dream. What is a vinegar legate? Is that how you a say it? A vinegar legate. Legate. Yes. See, I don't even know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, of all of the kind of memes that is to say, I'm not even sure like the way we use meme nowadays is really accurate in any kind of, okay. We just, she's giving me the wrap up. Like, <laughs> not wrap up, move it along. <laughs> um, the one that I liked the most was when people picked up on the whole vinegar leg is on the right thing, which if you don't know that one, it's from a fried chicken video that I did. And and the reason that I like that one is just that I think I just I just that's just a phrase that amuses me. Like vinegar leg is on the right. I it's I it sounds like some kind of like CV radio code or I I just think that it's like a really intriguing and, and intrinsically funny set of words. Um, and so what's a so yeah so 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 that's the one that I've chosen to embrace right. That's become my branding. Those three emojis at the end. That's vinegar leg is on the right. Hold on, right? I might have to reverse that shot in post. Um, anywho, your right or my right? That's another like thing. Like, which do I do? <laughs> stage right or stage left? Move it along. Uh, so uh, I was trying to come up with like, you know, how do I address my fandom? Because that's a thing now, which is awesome. Uh, and I thought, you know, uh, a legate is, uh, was, a, was a representative of the Pope, the papal legate. Because back in the days before email, um, you couldn't just like, hey, uh, in France, you could, couldn't just be like, hey, let's like wire up, let's call the Pope and ask how he'd feel about this. 
Um, so there was a, a, a papal legate, an official representative of the Pope who could function as the Pope in like every country in Christendom. So that's that's what a legate like is. And viewers... so like you are my no 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 you are my you are my represent you are my official representatives. You are you know you're oh, Lord. go out and uh, and I feel like your viewers don't know enough about you in order to make that make sense, which is that. And some people have picked up on in the comments, which is all your um, obsessive references to the way the Brits say things. Mm. But you love medieval history, like mm. a big nerd. Sorts. <laughs> it, Sorts. Yeah, when we started sharing a Netflix account, you immediately broke it by watching every single every single thing they had on there that was about swords. I love how like that's <laughs> so like. Lauren's tastes are normative, right? Like, I broke it. I made it different. No, you broke it because it's in my name and oh. all the things I watched disappeared. Well, <laughs> so there. That, that was a strong argument. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I have had the Netflix account since before I had you. People are going to wonder why you're not on camera right now. Because <laughs> I don't want to You're talking to be. a whole lot. <laughs> I have no interest. All right, I feel that. Neither do I. <laughs> this is the worst part of the job. Uh, I have not thickened my skin to the comment section, so wow. I'm going to stay off camera. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. What video was the most challenging or time-consuming to make? Um, there are a couple of them have been real bears. Um, certainly the lasagna video was tough just because that, that recipe is so, <laughs> so much work. And I, hadn't, and I hadn't gotten... It was pretty early and on in my, my career. Um, and so I hadn't really figured out my process a lot at that point. So I was, I was struggling with the recipe while simultaneously struggling with my gear and my angles and my lights and all of that. So that one, I was, I was real wiped by the end of that. Has there been another one that comes to mind to you where I was swearing a lot, like in the kitchen? <laughs> um, I mean, the, the lasagna one just took a long time. And then mostly the swearing comes when you're editing and usually the sciency ones, because those have a lot of cuts and you have to you put like pew, pew, pew. graphics on the screens and stuff yeah. and so yeah you'll you'll be a, in the other room and just swearing up a storm i mean really honestly you would think that it would be the really long and involved recipes that are kind of hard to shoot but the things that are hard to shoot are the ones that are really quick right because when something when when a recipe when a cooking process moves slowly, you have time to move the camera and the lights and blah, 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 adjust, adjust, adjust. But when you're trying to like, just like sear and sauce something. Yeah, that's when you're like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, it's real, <laughs> real hard. Um, and so with a couple of those, not with full recipes, but with a couple of specific procedures, I have done what I kind of swore I wouldn't do, which is to do like the TV thing where you like shoot it twice. You do it twice. Um, at, from different angles, and then you you uh, you you kind of cobble it together. Should we do like one more? Because I feel like this is. Should we bring this in for a landing? There were three more. Okay. Do you want to do all three? Should we do all three? Vote yes or no in the comments. <laughs> okay. What are the challenges of being a YouTuber in a non-major city as compared to LA or NYC? There are challenges. I think it's nothing but awesome. It's cheaper. nothing but awesome. It's way cheaper. Get out of expensive cities. Flee. Run. There's no point. If you can get out, if your job does not require you to be there, leave. It is a big, beautiful country. There's so many nice places to live. Um, this whole winner-take-all city situation, it's so bad. Escape it the second that you can. There's no bad to it. It's all good. Um, I started doing voice doing radio voiceover this year, what can you tell me as a veteran? <laughs> as a veteran. What advice do you have for somebody doing voice work? Uh, in as much as you can, sound like yourself, right? Most people, when they start, are trying to put on a voice. Oh my gosh. Yeah, when you first started on a, a public so radio bad. station, so I, bad. I went to pick you up after your first shift, and yeah. I got there early, so I flipped on the radio to hear you, and I was like... Who's this guy? I thought Adam was going to be on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> but I honestly, I really, I have a memory, like a very, very specific memory of being in the booth at WFIU in Bloomington, Indiana. Love you. Um, where I was tracking a story and I was just like, you know, could I really, could I really just say this? Like in, like just as myself? Is that okay? Can I get away with that? I'm going to try it. 
And, and like, and I was, I mean, even like, like George Walker, <laughs> you know, we said the next day, I was like, oh, you sounded really good on that one. And I was just like, yeah, I, th I think so. Because you right? stopped trying to sound like a radio voice right, right. and you sound. So certainly like tip number one is like, is just try, try to be yourself in as much as that's possible. And that's, that's kind of, that's really simplistic advice, right? Because you can't just sound like yourself. A lot of people will say, just sound like yourself. No, you have to be like the best version of yourself, the most on it, the smartest, the most with it, the most concentrated, the most prepared version of yourself. And that's like a hard person to be, right? There's a reason you're not that person all the time. The other thing is that um, it's just like when people say salt and pepper to taste and you have to learn how much you like, you, to, when somebody says sound like yourself, you have to learn what you sound like. That's not just knowledge that can be taken for granted, especially when you are either a young person or a person who has not heard themselves on tape very often. There's a process of learning yourself and who you are and what you sound like. And, you know, no, no I've never seen, I've been around like really, really, really talented people in public radio and podcasting and such, and, and no, like none of them sounded great their first year. <laughs> um, it, it, there's a learning curve for everyone and just, you know, bash your way through it. Um, don't, you know, the, the worst mistake I think you can make in any creative endeavor is to wait until you feel like you're good enough, right? Like if I had done that with this, like I, this, all of this never would have happened, right? Because I was, I, you know, I, I made my first cooking video because I, I'm a radio guy and I, I don't, I didn't know any of my cameras and I needed to practice, right? So my videos have been terrible, right? From a, from a production standpoint and, you know, steadily getting better with a few weird kind of backslides, usually because I, you know, just lost a piece of equipment that I, I come to count on or something like that. Um, and and if I had, if I had, you know, if I had been my younger, way more like in his own head self, um, the self of mine who really failed at being a classical composer, which is like the first thing I tried to be, like many reasons why I failed at that was that I would, I, I didn't let anything out into the world until I felt it was perfect. And, and so as a result, I just didn't get enough reps, right? I just, I needed to productively fail a lot more often. And the only way to do that really, I think is out in public. I don't think you can really do that in your room. Uh, so yeah, just get out there and sound bad for a while until you don't. All right, last question before the lightning round. The lightning round? There is, it's very quick. Okay. Hence, lightning round. Um, so you mentioned earlier in the video, like three hours ago. Um, that, That's not much of a stretch. <laughs> that um, you're only going to be a professor for three more weeks. Yes. Soon you are going to be a full-time YouTuber. Uh-huh. Um, can you just talk briefly <laughs> about um, how you are able to do that and maybe answer, it might include um, why you have NVIDIA sponsorships? Sure, yeah. So uh, why am I doing that? Um, I, I absolutely love teaching. I love my university. I love Mercer University. I love my students. I, I love what I do there. Um, I wish that I could keep doing that forever. I really can't do that and do this. Um, I am absolutely killing myself. I am not well. This I semester has been very hard. I don't feel good, okay? <laughs> um, I'm hanging by my fingernails here, y'all. Um, and you know, I cannot do both. And this makes more money, to be pretty frank about it, you know. And it's also awesome. Like, it's great. It's like, it's, it's, it's a dream job, right? Well, and you I'm, are a person for whom following curiosity is, like, your number one hobby. Yeah. And so this allows you to follow your curiosity right. and then share that with the world. Yes. Like, I've wanted to, for 10 years, figure out if there's a way, if you absolutely have to cook custard in a water bath, right? Like... All the cookbooks say it, but do you really have to? And I didn't just didn't want to risk it, you know, like on any given night. And now because like it's my job, I just made custards. I made like 20 custards in a weekend. And uh, until I, you know, landed on like a protein to fat ratio and a temperature where it totally works without the water bath, right? And I've always wondered that, and now I get to go and, and I would totally do that experiment even if I didn't have you to do it for. Um, but the fact that you're there 
means that um, when I do that, money comes out, right? <laughs> Which allows me to justify spending the time. Like I'm not like frankly a lot of YouTubers where you're just like a you know, 25-year-old kid with like no real responsibilities other than to yourself, right? Like we have a mortgage and we have small children and uh, I have to like, I have to be responsible. Uh, so I can't do both things and this job is awesome and it pays better. So it's kind of a no-brainer, right? Um, so I hope to continue teaching in some respect. I, I would love to continue to have a relationship with Mercer um, uh, in one way or another for a long time, or uh, potentially, you know, if, you, if you'd like me to teach at your institution, I would be happy to have a conversation with you. Um, I would love to keep teaching at some, but this needs to be my focus because I need to trim. I can't keep going like this. Um, how does it make money? Uh, honestly, it's like, be, it's really, it's pretty, at this point, it's pretty easy to make a living as a YouTuber if you're the kind of person whose videos reliably get, you know, about 100,000 views each and you're publishing at least once a week, right? You could totally pay the bills um, with just YouTube partner program revenue like that assuming that you're not a person with a lot of bills, right? And that could either, that could mean like a person with a family and a mortgage, or it could also mean that, um, you know, you have really expensive medical bills or some kind of situation, right? But if you're kind of like a quote unquote normal person, which I could, wish I could have a better way of saying that, like you could totally make a living with just YouTube partner program revenue that way. And by that mean, that means like when, when YouTube puts uh, ads before or after my video, not me delivering the ad, but like the packaged ads that come, YouTube sells those and uh, you get, I get half of the money that they make from that. That's the partner program, right? So you might ask, why do I then subject you to a lot of in-video sponsorship where I take two seconds and talk about how great Squarespace is? Because it is. Um, so a couple of reasons. Um, one is that I think that relying on YouTube as your sole source of money is really dangerous. And if I, again, if I was 22 and like I had no obligations to anyone else, I would totally just do that. Be fine, right? But because I need to, you know, be serious about this, I really need to diversify my income, right? Because uh, YouTube can do things and has done things to that radically overnight completely wreck people's livelihoods, right? And I don't hold that against YouTube. I think they have an incredibly hard job, um, and they've had to make difficult decisions that anyone in their position would have to make. Okay, I could certainly quibble with certain ones, but you know, I, I have the privilege of not being in their chair. Um, so they could like, they could make one, you know, some, you know, there could be a policy change. It could be a copyright thing. It could literally just be like some nerd in California changing one line in an algorithm. And like my entire like livelihood could disappear overnight. And that's not a risk that I'm willing to live with, um, when we are, when we have our kids. Right. Right. So. Especially uh, because I also don't have a steady job. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all my fault. It's all her fault. If you don't like the ads, it's her fault. Yep. Buy sorry. more books. Yeah. Lauren Morrill. <laughs> um, so I do it to uh, for stability that if the partner program revenue just fell off a cliff for some reason, that I would have another revenue stream that's established and there. It's also, frankly, that you know we're, we're, I'm, I'm making a lot more money right now than we need. And the reason that I'm doing it is it's like, I cannot imagine a less re recession-proof business than the one that I am doing right now, right? Um, no economy goes up forever, right? There's going to be a recession at some point. And the first thing that companies cut is their marketing budgets because, they, well, they cut like the coffee and then they cut the marketing budget, right? Um, so I totally expect business to, even if I, even if you keep watching and I remain very popular and the, the algorithm gods continue to favor me, right? Um, I totally expect revenue to just fall off a cliff at some point in the next few years. And so we're saving. <laughs> um, and when your other uh, favorite YouTubers are telling you about how awful things are and how they can't pay their rent and stuff, um, I won't be doing that. I'll be making cooking videos for you because I will have planned for that moment. Way to be a grown up. Yeah. Okay. Adulting. <clears throat> Lightning round. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I'm going to ask you, these are like favorites and least favorite things. Yeah. 
Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Hit me, bartender. Okay. Favorite TV show? Oh, Arrested Development. Really? Yeah. I thought you were going to say Star Trek. Star Trek The Next Generation would, would definitely be number two, but I think Arrested Development is, is like the best thing that's ever been on TV. Yeah. The original. We yeah. used to fall asleep watching that. Yeah. Okay. Um, favorite movie? I don't want to say the real answer. Because it's so stereotypical. What is it? It's the Godfather. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> um, favorite band or musician? Oh, gosh. If the first four Metallica albums were a band, <laughs> right? And the Black Album and everything after had never happened, then it would be Metallica. Okay. By the way... Dude, you're totally Jason Newstead. I am? With your saving of the money. Remember oh, yeah, I know. Sandwiches? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got plans for those sandwiches. And, no, I got plans for those millions and eight for fucking sandwiches. Google that shit. You, okay, you that is some of the a, best life advice. link to it. Yeah, here. okay. Link in the description. <laughs> okay. Assuming that that hasn't been taken down for some copyright reasons. lightning round. Okay. Assume, assuming that Lars has not gotten that taken down off of YouTube. Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Re really, really quick. Okay, so, like, important piece of, li of life advice. <laughs> Actually, this is not an important piece of life advice. This is just something, some stupid thought that I had. This is the exact opposite of that. Because one of my students was like pointing, was like asking me if I'm a millennial or a Gen Xer. And I was like saying, well, I'm kind of on the edge. It sort of depends on yeah. how you define it, right? And I kind of want to be considered a millennial because that would mean that I'm younger. But I kind of want to be a Gen Xer because Gen Xers yeah. have way better music. They're cooler. Um, and they're cooler, right? Uh, but yeah, I totally realized, you know what the dividing line is between, the meaningful dividing line is between Gen Xers and uh, millennials? What? Is and I have to like do like Jeff Foxworthy for this, oh, no. right? Okay. If if Metallica ended at the Black Album for you, you might be a Gen Xer. If Metallica began at the Black Album for you, you might be a millennial. So wait, what if Metallica be began with that behind the music where they cut all their hair? <laughs> oh. Whatever you are, I don't want to know you. That was my first introduction to Metallica. Jump cut. <laughs> Jump cut. Um, favorite food. Pizza and ice cream. Uh, yeah, ice cream probably. Okay. Least favorite. Mil milkshakes, food. really. Oh, yeah. milkshakes, yeah. yeah. Least favorite food. That doesn't seem fair. I mean, every. every... Beets. But that's a tough one because it's like I I want to like beets. But I, you hate them. And beets I are like so them. beautiful and they're so good for you and you can do all kinds of cool things with them and just the 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 the, the tiniest smell of them just really turns my stomach and I feel very sad for, about that. <laughs> Um, and that's honestly, you know, that's like the attitude that you should have when you don't like something. Don't get all freaking high and mighty. Like, oh, I would ever, never eat that. Like, you should be sad that you are not able to enjoy something that brings so much pleasure to other people. Favorite cooking related media? I have very mixed feelings about Jamie Oliver. Um, but there's a series that he did called Jamie at Home. That I like. I don't even like the real the recipes very much. I don't really like Jamie in it, um, but it's the way it's shot is is so exquisite. It is the most beautifully shot food uh, show I've ever seen. Mine is the audiobook of Kitchen Confidential, read by Anthony Bourdain. Oh, I've listened to that like on. ten times. Come on, but not since he died because it makes me too sad. Yeah, it's so good. Not that any of you care what mine is. Um, favorite chef. They care. Favorite chef. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't, yeah, you, your favorite chef got canceled. <laughs> okay, favorite YouTube channel. So a lot of people like wonder if like I watch uh, other YouTubers, f food YouTubers who, whom the algorithm is also serving you probably at the moment. Um, and the honest answer is like not very much. Uh, n not because I don't like them. Like they seem like lovely people and they do really amazing things. Um, it's just kind of not, not, not what I, not my jam. I, I spend most of my time in, in, in music YouTube and bodybuilding YouTube, uh, if I'm really honest about it. Uh, so in bodybuilding YouTube, it would be Tominator. Uh, the, he is the thinking man's bodybuilding commentator. Um, although I loved Louis Marco before he uh, went totally insane in terms of his views on women. And in terms of music YouTubing, I mean, there's so many people, but I'll give a shout out to Rick Beato. Um, because he's great and I've taken a lot of pretty direct inspiration from how he approaches matters of education on his channel. Uh, and he's, uh, he's a local boy. He's up in Atlanta and uh, he's a good guy.
Lots of people asked how we met. We met on the internet before <laughs> everyone did that. What site did we meet on? Live journal. <laughs> I love telling people that. <laughs> that was gonna that's sound how like, you know we're... Uh, yeah, that's going to sound to them like, we met on like a steam locomotive. <laughs> Live journal. <laughs> At least it's not like GeoCities or something. I mean, it might as well have been. Uh. Should we call it a day, y'all? Well um, done. Okay, so legit, Adam, don't... I'm looking at you. Don't edit this very much, okay? Um, to the rest of you who are out there, and not just me in my chair two hours from now, um... I hope that you enjoyed this. Please let us know if you liked this, if you want me to make this kind of a regular feature. Tell me what you want and we'll do it um, or not. Bye. <laughs> Bye.